I'm going to finish it today if the Lord's will. Amen? Amen. And last week I started a message, what's the big deal? Look to somebody and say, what's the big deal? You know, one of the times in life we go through things, people want to know, well, what's the big deal? Why is it an issue? Why is there a problem? You know, when it's somebody else's problem, it's a big deal. When it comes to you and I, why are you making a big deal out of it? Some people say, why turn a, 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 a molehill into a mountain? Well, believe me, when it comes down to your health and strength, it is a big deal. When it comes down to what you're going through in your life, it is a big deal. We're going in the book of Acts, chapter, uh, chapter, book of Acts, chapter 6, starting at verses 16. If the Lord's will, amen. amen. Part 2, what's the big deal? Amen. amen. Last week we learned all about what it means to be a big deal. Amen. When God created the heavens and the earth, it was a big deal. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. When he created all the planets and all the universe, amen. it was a big deal. When he created all the angels in heaven where he presided upon his throne, it was a big deal. I don't know about you, but whatever God do, it's a big deal. Look at somebody and say, what's the big deal? God is the big deal. Amen. The Bible teaches that the gospel must be preached. The gospel not only is good news, come on somebody, but it's good advice for mankind. We're living in a day and time where men are running to and fro in the earth, but they're not running to Jesus. They're making preparation for the Pope to come into the land, and the Pope will leave the land, and God bless this man, for he has touched and revived a many heart. But I'm here to tell you, it's God we must put our trust in. Man can help us only so far. The government can only help you so far. But I'm here to tell you, why are you making a big deal about this? Because God is a big deal. If it wasn't not for God, you and I wouldn't be sitting here today. If it wasn't not for God, you wouldn't have what you have today. If it wasn't not for God, you wouldn't have your health today. It is a big deal. You know, man made a big deal about diseases, but God made a big deal about healing. Come on, somebody. Man made a big deal about living right, but God made a big deal about walking right. Come on, somebody. God created all things for his praise and for his glory. Somebody say amen. amen. Whatever you're going through in life, I want you to know that God is with you. Amen. He said, I will never leave you, nor ever forsake you. Yes. Why? Because it's a big deal. Don't you know that God is concerned about your health? Yes. Don't you know that God is concerned about your well-being? Yes. Ellen may not make a big deal of it, but God will. Yes. Well, because God knew that you were bought with a price. In case you didn't know, you and I were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. You and I was kidnapped. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus paid a ransom for your soul. Somebody say amen. amen. Jesus paid a ransom for your soul. And when he paid it, he paid the price in full. He laid down his life on Calvary. And then the Bible says after God paid a ransom, you and I were adopted. How was you adopted? You were adopted. You became to be heirs of God and joint heirs of Christ Jesus. You are a part of the kingdom of God. Don't you think that's a big deal? Don't you think that's a big deal to know that one day you're going to spend all eternity with God? Oh, you act like you don't believe that. Look at somebody and say, you and I. Come on, look around at somebody and say, you and I going to spend eternal life with God himself. Don't you think that's a big deal? Oh, my Lord. You know, you got loved ones and family members that you, you wish they would have keep, kept on living. But one day you'll see them again. And that's going to be a big deal. Come on, somebody. The angels recognize that you're going through, but you're going to have the victory every day. Somebody, amen, amen, somebody. You have the victory in Jesus. Amen. That's a big deal. The world don't have the victories that you have. They can't claim the victories that you claim. 
when the specialists and the doctors and those that work and spend part of our, our society recognize when something good happens in the land, they want to report something good. But all you hear on the news is bad news. But I got some good news that Jesus is coming back. And he's coming back for a church without spot or without wrinkle. And that is a big deal today. Oh, my Lord. Last week, you got a full dose about what happens to a person when they lie to the Holy Ghost. When you blaspheme the Holy Ghost, it'll kill you dead. Well, come on, somebody. Over here, we see very clearly in, in chapter uh, 6 and verse 16 that after Peter had walked through the streets, the people heard about Peter and heard about the apostles and how they were preaching and proclaiming the gospel to a point where they were bringing sick folks on couches and bed, laying them in the street, hoping that the sun would hit Peter at an angle and his shadow would cast upon them and they would be healed immediately. Well, when you're going through something, it might not be a big deal to somebody else, but it's a big deal to you. And if it's a big deal to you, there's a big deal to God. Somebody say amen. And I'm here to tell you, God, because he loves you so much, he's going to make a big deal out of you. You hear the world always trying to sell a big deal. Come on down and we'll sell you a car. Come on down and we'll sell you a flat screen TV. Oh, my God. You want a TV, you don't even have to go and buy that one today. All you have to do is go around trash day and you see these big old TVs that used to be the big thing. And I had a patient of mine saying, I got a TV in every room now. And I thought he was talking about flash screen, high definition, 4X. He said, no, you know the big ones, people are putting them out in the trash. And I'm getting them left and right. He was so happy. Maybe he had a TV in every room before. And to have one that is thin, is a big thing. And it's going to get thinner than that. You watch with time. So here we see in verse 16, it's chapter, chapter 6, it's chapter, five. chapter 5. I'm sorry, my apology, my apology. I stand to be corrected. I've been saying 6. Maybe I need to go to chapter 6. Chapter 5, chapter 5. I'm sorry, chapter 5. I'm glad somebody was paying attention. Chapter 5, verse 16. Chapter 5, verse 16. Verse 16. Yes, sir. Am I right? Yes. Y'all ain't mad with me? Yes. Okay, all right, okay. All right, all right. All right, I stand to be corrected now. I stand to be corrected. Yes. Chapter, chapter 5, verses 16. Okay. Somebody said he got that right. All right, okay. There came a multitude out of the cities round about Jerusalem bringing six folks. Them that were vexed with unclean spirits. In other words, they were possessed with demons. They, it's kind of like a full moon when all kind of creatures come out. People worry about the werewolves and vampires. But I'm here to tell you, I'm worried about God. Why am I worried? Because God is vexed in his spirit by what mankind is doing. And he's making a big deal about what's happening in the land today. Unclean spirits, and they were healed. Everyone that was unclean spirit is sick and vaxxed. They all were what? They all were healed. Verse 17 says, Then the high priest got mad with Peter. The high priest made a big deal out of what Peter was doing, and all he was doing is what God told him to do. Many times when you get in trouble is when you're doing what God tell you to do. Come on, somebody. This high priest, whoever he was, rose up, and all that were with him, which uh, the sect of the Sadducees, they were sad, you see, and they were filled with indignation. They were angry. They were bitter at Peter because what he was doing is the same thing that Jesus was doing. He was healing the land. Verse 18 says, and he laid their hands on him. Come on, somebody. And they laid their hands on him. And an apostle and put them in the common prison. But the angel of the Lord by night opened the prison door. 
man tried to put him on lockdown, but God opened the doors. Somebody say amen. Man made a deal out of it, but God made a bigger deal. The angels opened the doors and brought them forth and said to them, this is what the angel said in verse 20, you go now and stand and speak in the temple to the people all the words of life. Amen. This word we're talking about, how many got their comb with them? Amen. Take your comb out and put it under that verse of scripture. Yeah. And now we're going to comb through this. Didn't I tell you we're going to comb through this? Yeah. See, some of y'all have forgot already. See how, see how the enemy tried to steal your blessing? You got your comb on it? Yeah. All right, so follow me with your comb. Yeah. Then you know what it means to comb through the scriptures. Yeah. And when they heard that they enter into the temple early in the morning. Well. Early in the morning and they taught, but the high priest came and they that were with him and they called the council together yeah. and all the senators of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought forth. Yeah. Verse 22 says, slide on down with your comb. But when the officer came and found them not in prison, they returned and told, saying, The prison truly found we shut there with all safety and the keepers standing without before the door. But when we were open, we found no man therein. Now they're confused. That's what the devil crowd would do be confused at what God is doing. Bring your comb on down to verse 24 now. Don't think this is silly. This is something important. Yes. And when the high priest and the chief captain of the temple and the chief priest heard these things, they doubted of them wherein this would grow. Mm. They were worried about how these men got out of jail and all the prisoners was on guard and nobody saw them. Amen. I'm here to tell you what may seem impossible to man it's possible to God. Amen. And God can make a big deal out of you and me. Amen. Now when the high priest in verse 24, in verse 25, he says, Then came one and told them, saying, Behold, look at here. The men whom you put in prison, them guys you're looking for that are preaching the gospel, them guys that are making a big deal out of God's word, I know where they are. They're standing in the temple and they're preaching to the people of God. You want to find them. They ain't on the run. They ain't hiding from the law. They're in the temple preaching the word of life. Everybody say the word of life. Verse 26 says, And then with the captains with the officer and brought them without violence. For they fear, bring your comb on down. We're going through this with a fine tooth comb. For they fear the people, lest they should have been stoned. And when they had brought them, they set them before the council. And the high priest asked them, saying, See, in other words, this high priest and these council and these, these senators are making a deal out of this. But I'm here to tell you, God's going to make a bigger deal out of it. What are you saying? Verse 27 says, say, did not we straightway command you? Who is man to think that he can command you? Didn't we seriously tell you that you should not teach in his name? Who named the name of Jesus? They try to say his name because Jesus' name is a big idea. It ain't just a name that people are naming. It's a name that God gave his only begotten son. And behold, ye have filled Jerusalem with your doctrine and intend to bring this man blood upon us. Verse 29 says, listen to what Peter said. Peter says in verse 29, bring your comb on down. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We are to obey God. We are to obey God. 
Paul yeah, Peter said, I know what you said. And you're making a deal out of it. But God told us to preach the gospel of life, and we're making a big deal out of this. Why? Because all these people's soul need to be saved. You got loved one and family members that need to be saved. Make a big deal out of it. When they don't want to hear you preach it in the house. When they don't want to hear you talk about it, talk about it in the house. Make a big deal out of life and eternal life. Because in eternal life, we all can have it if we name the name of Jesus. We are to obey God rather than obey man. Now you got a choice. You can obey man and his doctrine, or you can obey God and his doctrine. But when man make a big deal of his constitution, we can make a big deal of the word of God. Because the word said, in the last day, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is the Son and to the glory of God. Even though we're still neck and still knees that don't want to bend down, I believe the angels got breaking stick wounds. They got a way of breaking your kneecap so you break on down. Come on, somebody. Because every knee is going to bow and every tongue going to confess that Jesus Christ as the son of the living God. So you might want to get into that tomb right now. Who is he? He's the son of the living God. My God, my God. How do I know this? Hold on to verse 29. I know this because when, when Jesus was coming through the land, the Bible said as he entered into Jericho, you know this story about how, but I, I did a little more research on it. That way he was into Jericho. He ran into a man by the wayside by the name of Blind Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus was blind and couldn't find his way around. And everywhere he went, somebody had to show him the way. But one day now, as it would be that as Jesus was coming through Jericho. Come on, somebody. As Jesus was coming your way. Somebody heard all the commotion and blind Barnabas was there on the wayside listening and he asked, what's all this meant? In other words, what's the big idea? Somebody said, it's Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. Oh, you don't hear me. Whenever Jesus come by 122 to a draw, it's a big idea. Whenever the Spirit of God walk in the midst, it's a big idea. Oh, you don't hear me this morning. Whenever the word of God is being proclaimed, it's a big idea. Blind Barnabas was by the wayside, begging. Isn't it amazing the man that has two eyes but cannot see? But this man, Blind Barnabas, had no sight, but yet he heard the Son of God was coming. He made a big idea, and he didn't, he didn't call Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth. But he said, Jesus, thou son of David. He recognized Jesus' deity. Come on, somebody. He recognized his power and his authority. He recognized his majesty and his power, and he made a big deal out of it. Now, why do I know he made a big deal out of it? Because there was others around him that didn't want Jesus to be recognized as the Messiah. Didn't want to be recognized as the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. So blind Bartimaeus made a big deal out of it. The more they told him to quiet down, the louder he got. The more folks don't want you to pray, you have to pray in the house. The more they don't want you to praise God, you have to praise him in the house. The more they don't want you to call on the holy name of Jesus. You should make a big deal out of it. What have he done for you that you can make a big deal out of it? What have he brought you from that you could have been lost? Many of us are supposed to be dead, buried, and gone. We all are going on our way to hell. Power, reach down into the flame, reach down into the heat, 
we got into destruction and pulled you about of that flame, pulled you back from the brink of death. When hell hounds look wild and they're smiling at you. You got a lot to be thankful for. You had to make a big deal out of it. You got a lot to be glorifying God for. You had to make a big deal out of it. Wait a minute. When Jesus heard, Jesus, thou son of David, that tells me that blind Bartimaeus, a man who couldn't see, but yet he went through the scripture with a fine tooth comb. Come on, somebody. Ain't no way you can call Jesus, thou son of David, unless you know enough about the scriptures that you can identify him as the son of the living God. He asked Peter, who do men say that I am? Some say you're Elijah. Some say you're a prophet. Some say you're a good man. He said, but who do you say I am? Yeah. And Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. Yeah. Peter made a big deal out of it, even though Jesus said, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father which is in heaven. When God reveals something to you, you ought to make a big deal out of it. When God shows you a revelation of his word and something going on in your life, you ought to stand up and think for a moment and give God the glory and make a big deal out of it. When God spared your life, you ought to make a big deal out of it. When God saved you, from an untoward generation. You ought to make a big, big deal. Amen. Jesus said, bring him to me. Loud as he was hollering, Jesus, the son of David. Jesus heard his name. He heard his name. Jesus heard his name. He said, bring him to me. And somebody said, okay, get on up, Brian Bartimaeus. He's calling you. You can see a blind daughter near. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Where, where is he at? Come on, somebody. We getting close now. And he stood right there in front of Jesus, and he heard Jesus' voice with his eyes all, all blind and couldn't see. Jesus said, what can I do for you? He said, Lord, Lord, that I might receive my sight. Come on, somebody. Many of us have been blind all our lives. But God wants to give you sight. God wants you to see what he wants you to see. God wants you to be anointed with his anointing. Jesus says, by your faith, receive your sight. Can you imagine blind Bartimaeus' eyes popping open? See, you and I can see. So you might not take your vision serious, but when you have never seen, or when you're about to lose your sight, your vision is a big deal. Come on, somebody. You ask any ophthalmologist, any specialist that dealing with retina or glaucoma issues or any macular degeneration or any cataract development, they see what it be a big deal. You don't have to say amen. amen. I know I'm where I'm going with this. It's important that you understand. Look around and somebody say, I can see you. I can see you. No, turn around and look at them and say, I can see you. I can see you. And that's a big deal to me. You got to thank God you got eyes to see. Thank God you got ears to hear. Thank God you got a good mind that you can remember things. God, you got feet. Come on, somebody. You can walk with and shoes to put on your feet, clothes to put on your back. You got a roof over your head. You got food on your table. You ought to thank God you got a place to live. Pastor, you're making a big deal out of this sermon. What else am I supposed to make a big deal out of? 
Come on, somebody. Because what the White House can't do for me, the State House can't do for me, More House can't do for me, the Crack House can't do for me. Ain't nobody can do me like Jesus. I'm here to tell you today, you can turn to him and he'll give you an answer. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody give God the praise. Somebody give God the praise. Oh, somebody ought to praise him. Somebody ought to praise him. Somebody ought to glorify him. Oh, my God. They're blind Barnabas. The Bible said when he received his sight that he followed Jesus. And all those that were there following Jesus gave God the glory. They worshiped God. That's why we get excited when somebody say that the doctor couldn't help me. But God's hand was there. The doctor operated, but it was nothing else they can do. That's when the hand of God easy it on them. And I'm here to tell you, whenever God hands in the midst, whenever God bless something, God is going to protect something. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. What's the big deal? The big deal is that God saved you. The big deal is God sanctified you. The big deal is God baptized you with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. You got fire in your life. When he spoke to Moses, Moses, pull off your shoes. Why? Because you're standing on holy ground. Word, God said, you can't wear them same old shoes. Because when you come in my presence, you're living a sanctified life. God said, you're sanctified life. I'm going to clean you up and I'm going to send you back to bring the word of God. That's a big deal. When you're reaching souls for Christ. Blind Bartimaeus. Can you see now? What I love about Blind Bartimaeus, the Bible said he had an old raggedy, raggedy coat on. Come on, somebody. A beggar's coat. Come on, somebody. You know, when you need something, your hand is always out. But when your hand is out, it seems to be always out to the wrong people. I'm here to tell you, if you're going to reach your hands out, reach your hands out to the Lord. Yeah. Come on, somebody. If you're going to reach out, reach out for God's help. Lord, I need your help, and I need your help right now. Can you imagine this man seeing for the very first time? Seeing the colors of the trees, the color of of faces and clothes. Can you imagine him looking into the face of Jesus? See, you, you don't even understand where I'm coming from. As good as God been to you, as wonderful as God has touched your life, and the many blessings he has bestowed upon your life and redeemed you by his blood, you haven't even seen his face. You don't even know what he looked like, yet he showed his Shekinah glory. Let he show his anointing. Let he show you his power. Let he show you his deliverance. Let he have shown you his healing. My, my, my. Let me read a little more. Verse 30 says, And the God of our Father, the God of our Father, raise up Jesus, whom you slew, and you hung him on a tree. Him have God exalted with his right hand to be prince, to be prince, to be a prince, and to be a savior, for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sin. And we are his witnesses of these things. And so also the Holy Ghost, whom God had given to them, they obey him. Everybody got your comb? Everybody got your comb? 
Verse 32, read your comb. Verse 32. And we are his what? Witnesses. Of these things. Yes. And so also the what? Holy Spirit. Whom what? Lord. If you want the Holy Ghost, all you got to do is obey him. You want the Holy Ghost in your life, just do what God tells you to do. You want the anointing in your life, just do what God commands you to do. And when they heard that, when they heard these scribes, these these, these Sadducees, these high priests, heard the preaching and teaching of, of Peter and all the work that he would do. The Bible said in verse 23, looking for yourself. And when they heard, looking calm down the road, and it said, and they were cut to what? They were cut to their hearts and took counsel to slay him. Then stood there up on one of the council by the name of Gamaliah, a doctrine of the law. In other words, he had a PhD in theologian. And this man, Gamaliah, who had a doctrine of the law, had a reputation among all the people, commanded to put the apostle forth a little space, give him a little opportunity. And verse 35, go through it with your comb now. And say to them, ye men of Israel, take heed to yourselves what ye intend to do as touching these men. Before you make a big deal, God is going to make a big deal of you. Verse 36 says, for before these days rose up Thaddeus, boasting himself to be somebody to whom a number of his men, about 400 men, joined themselves who were slain. And all as many as obeyed him were scattered and brought to nothing. And that's what happened to Thaddeus, calling himself to be something he won't. Verse 37 says, where you call him at, after this man rose to Judas of Galilee in the days of taxi and drew away much people after him, he also perished, and all, even as many as obeyed him, were what dispersed. Those that followed this Judas, this man of Galilee, also wound up in a bad spot. But verse 38, stay with me now. And now I say unto you, said Gamaliah, he's smart, you know. Refrain from these men, lest these alone, for it is this counsel or this work to be a man, it will come to nothing. If this work be a man, it's going to come to nothing. Amen. Just like Judas of Galilee, just like Thaddeus, the foreign to me, it's going to come to nothing. Amen. But in verse 39, somebody ought to shout hallelujah. In verse 39, but if God but if it be of God, ye cannot overthrow it, less hardly ye shall fall even as fight against God. Who you want to fight against? Man? A fight against God. You can't overthrow what God got. The devil tried that, he got kicked out of heaven. That's a sign for you and me that you can't overthrow what God has already established. So God is making a big deal even though he used the high priest, Gamaliah. Amen. Verse 4, it says, And to him that agreed, and when they said, Call apostles, I want you to beat them. Listen to this now. You got your comb there? Because I want you to pay attention here. He said, in other words, they said, well, get them apostles together. We're going to teach them a lesson. We're going to see, we're going to see, can we beat the heaven out of them? Now, you heard people say, I'll beat the hell out of you? 
But y'all look at me like that. You hear people say, I beat the hell out of you? Well, right now, these uh, so-called priests and senators and council want to beat the heaven out of these men. God had already saved them. God had already sanctified them. They got heavenly ways in them, and yet they want them to turn on Jesus. Peter didn't been down that road. He didn't been down there. He know what it is to be without Christ. He know what it is to be without an anointing. It is the anointing that will break the yoke. And the only way the yoke won't be broken is you don't want it broken. But if you got something going on in your life and you want it straightened out, you can say, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, you are a confidant and a help in time of trouble. I need you to break this yoke. And he says in verse 40, and the apostles were beaten. Their command that they should not speak in the name of Jesus. And they let them go. Now this is what I like about verse 41 and 42. You got your comb? Amen. And we are combing through. Amen. And they departed from the presence of the council. After they beat them, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer the shame for his name. Amen. Everybody say the shame, the shame for, his name. for his name. You know, if you suffer the shame for the name of Jesus, you know you got a great reward coming. When people put you down, knock you around, bounce you around, tell you ain't this and that ain't that, when they scandalize your name, don't you know when you stand up, for the name of Jesus, that you can suffer great things for his name, that you're going to receive a great reward. So you living for Christ and this hour, make a big deal out of it. Okay, some of y'all ain't with me right now. They made a big deal out of the Pope. Ain't that right? Amen. He came to Washington. Yeah. Yeah. He came to New York. Yeah. He spoke to both joint session of, of Congress and the UN. Yeah. Yeah. He down in Philadelphia, uh -huh. the city of Brotherly Love. Uh -huh. And he's speaking something, but what he's speaking don't sound like nothing you getting this morning. Come on, somebody. You're getting some power this morning. You're getting some anointing in your life this morning. You're getting power that can change your life. Can you imagine what would happen if that preacher, that pope started preaching like me? Y'all don't understand where I'm coming from. I'm not anti-Catholic church. I want you to understand some Catholicism in this teaching, this doctrine, is based on monotheism. One faith and one God. And they stand with a firm doctrine and boast 1.2 billion people around the world. If I can preach a sermon to 1.2 billion people, if I can preach a message over the airways and the skyway, over the radio and the magazine to 1.2 billion people. Think about it for a moment. Yeah, everywhere we go, we got to make a big deal about Christ. My, my, my. As we look here in verse 42, I'm going to be finishing. He says daily, every day you and I got to repent. Every day we're going to ask God for forgiveness. Daily in the temple, and in every house, in the temple, in the church, and in every house, they ceased not. They did not stop not teaching and preaching Jesus Christ. They didn't give up. They didn't give in. They didn't throw in the towel. They didn't abandon it. They didn't run away. And they stood steadfast, unmovable for the gospel's sake. 
What's the big deal, Pastor? The big deal is the good news. I'm thinking about the time when Jesus called uh, Andrew and Peter. Before Peter was preaching in the book of Acts, Jesus was looking for Peter in a little old town of Bethsaida. And they were around the Sea of Galilee, and Jesus found Andrew and Peter. And as he found them, you said, well, what's the big deal? The big deal is that God can find you if he's looking for you. I said, God can find you if he's looking for you. Oh, my Lord. You don't understand where I'm coming from. God has given you and me an opportunity today to proclaim the gospel. He's given you and me an opportunity to reach out by faith and to proclaim his name wherever you go. The Bible said when he found Peter and Andrew, he was looking for Philip. And he found Philip because if he found Philip, he'd know he'll find Nathaniel. Many of you know him as Bartholomew. Yeah. But the scripture call him Nathaniel. Yeah. And the Bible says that when, when, when Philip heard about Jesus, he went looking for Nathaniel and he found Nathaniel. Yeah. Nathaniel! I found him who Moses was talking about. I found him who all the prophets were speaking about. And you can see Nathaniel looking around at Philip. What you talking about? What's the big deal you're making? He said, I found Jesus. Amen. Look at somebody and say, I found Jesus. I found Jesus. Say it like you mean it. I found Jesus. I found Jesus. I found Jesus of Nazareth. Can you find Jesus for yourself? Nobody else can tell you about him and what he did for you but you. You got to know the man for yourself. You got to know the man from Galilee. You got to know he has power to set you free. You can see old Nathaniel. Jesus of Nazareth. Jesus of Nazareth. I know all about Nazareth. Ain't nothing down in Nazareth. Can any good thing come out of Nazareth? I'm telling you something big came out of Nazareth. Jesus made a big deal out of Nazareth. Jesus put Nazareth on the map. Jesus put you in heaven. It's a big deal. They came about a Nazareth. You know what I loved about Jesus? When Philip said, I found, and Nathaniel said, Can any good thing? And Jesus looked on, Nathaniel says, Behold, an Israelite indeed, whom there is no beguile, no deceitfulness in his disposition. But Jesus said uh, to Nathaniel, I saw you when you were sitting up underneath that fig tree. I saw you before Philip came and got you. The Bible said Nathaniel jumped up and looked at Jesus and said, you know me? Don't you know that God know you? Don't you know that God know what you're going through? Don't you know the pain that you're going through in your body? God knows about your ups and downs, your ins and outs. Yeah. 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 Nathaniel says, Rabbi. Wait a minute, he went from no good thing out of Nazareth to Rabbi? Yeah. What a change in the tune of his voice. He said, you saw me under, the, under that fig tree. He must have been thinking about God. He must have been thinking about God. He must have been combing through the scripture, trying to read more and understand more and more about God. He wanted a personal relationship. And yet he was meeting the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Amen. 
And Jesus says, he said, Rabbi, you saw me? He said, before Philip came and got you, I saw you. Don't you know that God know where you live? Don't you know God know where you work at? Don't you know God know what you do? God knows all about you. That's why at any given time, day or night, you can cry out to him. You got to pain under your fifth wheel, Lord Jesus. You got a pain in your back, Lord Jesus. You got a pain in your head, Lord Jesus. You got aching knees. He said, if you just call on me. He said, just call on me. I dare you to call on me. When you call on the name of Jesus, he said, I will. I'll answer you, and I'll show you great and mighty things. In other words, God said, because you called on me, I'm going to make a big deal out of it. <laughs> oh, nothing said, you mean you know all about me? That's what I loved about that whole story in the scripture and the first person. You know all about me? That's right. I saw you before you came. I know where you're going. And because you recognize who I am, Jesus said to Nathaniel, you ain't seen nothing yet. Jesus said, just because you came to me, I'm going to open up the windows of heaven. And I'm going to show you the angels that will be running back and forth from the throne of God to earth to reveal the messages of salvation. Wait a minute. Who is this man? Jesus, who is he? He's the son of a living God. He's Jesus of Nazareth. He's Mary's baby. He is a root. He's a root and the offspring. How can you be the root and the offspring of David? Before David, he came. And after David, I'm his offspring. Hey! And I love this about Jesus. The Bible said that Jesus and his disciples, along with his mother, was in a, in a town about 8 to 10 miles from uh, Jerusalem, about 8 to 10 miles in a place called Canaan. It was the first miracle that Jesus performed. And Mary must have knew the family because Jesus, and I want you to understand something, Jesus believed in the institution of marriage. Are uh, y'all with me on this? Him and his apostle went to this wedding. And the Bible said that Mary must have been part of the host uh -huh. because they celebrated, unlike the day we get married one day and we're back to our work the next. Uh -huh. But in biblical times, they celebrated a wedding feast for seven days. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, anybody, everybody that was invited, they know it was free food and free wine. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, somebody. The Bible said, oh, Jesus and his apostles were with him along with Mary. And they went down to Canaan. And about mid in the week, even the governor showed up. Amen. And you know, the governor got an entourage. And everybody got that hungry look like some of y'all got on y'all face. You ready for something to eat now? Where's my barbecue ribs? I'm going over to, come on, somebody. We're going over to Smoky Bones. We're going, we going over to Red Bone Restaurant. We're going out to Golden Corral. We're going to stop by the Buffalo House. Oh, we'll stop by Olive Garden. Come on, somebody. Give me some of that salmon that's cooked well done. You know I love their olive oil and them soft biscuits. I know where I'm going with this. 
And you can see Jesus and his disciples just eating and talking and laughing. And in the midst of the wedding that was going on, in the midst of the wedding feast, Mother Mary showed up on Jesus' porch. Y'all don't hear me talking now. She says, she says, Jesus, they have no wine. I'm going to be finished. They have no wine. Now, Ed is in the middle of the wedding feast. You both take care of your guests for seven days. Come on, somebody. And, and they ran out, of, I ran, ran out of wine. Don't say they ran out of food. They ran out of wine. And the governor and his hunter all showed up. Everybody's eating, but there ain't no wine. Oh, y'all ain't with me. You ever been to a, a ghetto wedding? I mean, they ain't got, they got paper cups, one big bucket of Kentucky Fried Chicken. You got all these people sitting around. They've been sitting there at the wedding. And ain't no food. Ain't nothing to drink. Even the Kool-Aid ain't got no sugar in it. Okay, y'all don't know where I'm going with this. I, I know exactly what I'm talking about. I'm in the first person whenever I preach. I, get a, I go right into that character and I get locked in because I've been there and then done that. You ain't telling me nothing I don't know. I've been there and I say, ain't this something? I'm going down to cook out and get me a poor pork sandwich. Okay, I'm going to leave. Jesus, Mary said to Jesus, you could tell that she was a part of the host because she said to him, uh, they have no wine. And Jesus said, dear woman, a woman, what, what do I have to do with you right now? Woman, what, what's the, what do you, what? he didn't say it like we said today. It was out of respect. Ma, I, man, listen, do you realize if I, if I do this thing, if I come up with this, when you realize that this is going to, this is going to bring forth an execution for my judgment? Do you understand what was happening here? He was getting ready to perform his first public ministry, and by performing his ministry, he set in motion. Are y'all with me on this? When he performed this miracle, he set in motion. His execution. Amen. The first miracle. So he tells the men that were standing there, the servants that were standing there, Mary told the servant, wherever. Somebody said, wherever. wherever. In other words, it's a big deal now. Whenever Jesus says something, whenever Jesus says something, whenever Jesus says something, say something, it's a big deal. Praise God. This is Pastor Watkins from Community Revival and Outreach Ministries. I trust that you enjoyed that wonderful service we just uh, had, and I trust the Lord that it touched your heart and your spirit, and it also inspired your soul. But beyond just listening to a message, we also ask you to accept Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And how you do that, you just simply ask and bow before Christ. And if you're willing to lay hands upon your TV or bow your heads right where you are or sitting, if you just bow here with me and we'll pray the prayer of faith. Heavenly Father, we truly thank you for all things in the wonderful name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that you forgive us of all our sins and have mercy upon our soul. And that not only you save us, O oh Lord, from our sins, but O oh Lord, that you would sanctify our hearts and sanctify our souls as well as, O oh Lord, baptize us with the Holy Ghost and that with fire. We accept you, O oh Lord, into our hearts and our life. We confess our sins and we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God and that God raised him from the dead. And by believing and accepting this, O oh Lord, we claim to be saved in his holy name. We give thanks and praise for all things. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I trust the Lord that your heart is fixed with the Lord and that your blessing will be assured and that you'll come out and fellowship with us. And if not with us, your, your own local church in your area and that God will be a blessing to you until we see you again. Take care and God bless. Bye-bye.